Let's see how much things I've forgotten today. and welcome to my podcast. I'm Naomi and this is NJ Knits where I talk about my knitting and I happen to be quite uh, energetic today which is great. I think it's the sun. I think I am highly influenced by the sun. It is true. So today it's starting to get festive. It's actually Hanukkah, um, the sixth night tonight. There are eight nights so tonight is the sixth night and for my present, I get to see my partner. I'm so excited. Um, so that's very exciting. And um, it's Advent calendar time, which is amazing. And um, I've got a tea Advent that I showed before on this podcast. And I've got a cup of it, actually. And I'm going to go grab it because otherwise I'll forget. I found more knits when I got my tea. This one is, um, it's like a, this is my tea advent calendar. Um, it is Santa's Christmas cookie. Black tea, sumac berries, cornflower, safflower, and red plum petals. Natural flavors. Santa's Christmas cookie, very nice. Um, do you know what? I might light a Hanukkah candle as well, just because I can. My partner got me this, so it's not Hanukkah candle as in the one that you celebrate Hanukkah with, but it's a Hanukkah themed, nice smelling candle. I'm gonna light it because I can, and I still have time before work, which is very exciting. So last night, I went to um, Caroline, from Caroline's Knits, And Rebecca, who I hadn't watched her, I, I, I watch Caroline's podcast, but I hadn't watched Rebecca's podcast. And um, Anastasia, I think the three of them made a virtual knit night and I'm so happy about it. It's such a great format. They go through like everyone that's there, everyone introduces themselves, says what they're knitting, what they're wearing, where they are. And then they go into breakout rooms so you can actually chat because there's a lot of people in the knit night, as one could imagine. Uh, it was so much fun. Stayed up till two in the morning, whoopsies. But I also finished um, a good chunk of my test knit, which I'm really pleased about because it's due on Monday. And my partner's here from tonight until Monday. So now I don't have to worry about finishing anything. I can just relax, knit when I want to and not knit when my partner wants me to not knit. <laughs> Um, so the knit night was amazing. Go and check out either one. Of, I'll put, I'll pop the three of their Instagrams on down below so you can check them out. And I think they usually like post the link or if you, um, DM them on Instagram. Um, so anyway, amazing. So yes, sorry. So speaking of down below, um, I'll put everything I talk about down below. Anything that's got like a little title that comes up on the screen there'll be links to it down below and um i um and and also please do subscribe if you watch this channel it would be very nice it makes me feel warm and cuddly when people subscribe and also when you leave a comment it makes me feel warm and cuddly so um please do those things if you want to don't feel pressured um i'm wearing my i just blanked on the name Carbeth, my Carbeth jumper, um, which I really want to make another one in non superwash yarn. The more I wear non super, the more I wear this superwash jumper. The other superwash jumper that I made 
I've already given away. That was the um, the self-drafted one that I gave to my cousin who loves it. The more I wear this, the more I'm like, I just don't like wearing superwash. It just doesn't. Okay, let me let me not just sound like a whiny person and give you reasons why. One, the pilling is real. Like I've I have worn this quite a bit, but the pilling is real, folks. It's real pilling, lots of pilling. Number two, I don't like the way it looks. It looks shiny and I like it when jumpers look more fluffy. Um, number three, I don't like the way it hangs. It hangs sort of limply and I like it when jumpers have a bit more stru structure. Um, number three, it stretches. So it's no longer really cropped but it's also no longer like so like cropped I feel would be here, which is kind of where it was in the beginning. Um, but it's also not long enough to be like, I feel like this would be more like wear with jeans length. So if I'm wearing jeans, I wouldn't wear this because it would be a little bit too short, but with a skirt, it's fine. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. There is nothing wrong with it. I just, I just don't prefer it. <laughs> um, so, yes. This is my Carbeth. Love the pattern. So quick and easy to make. I made it with two strands of Superwash Cascade 220 Sport held double. If you're ever looking for yarn and you don't have a huge budget, eBay it up. Because I got this, I got 10, 10 skeins of this, I think, for like £14. Um, so yeah, eBay, chef's kiss for eBay. Um, so I have loads of whips, but I also have some FOs, yay. Oh, I forgot some. So FO number one, my mitts, I finished them. So here they are. And I finished them whilst on the phone and I had in my head that I needed six rows and I was on the, the, the fifth, so I was like, this is my last row. And I just, I had this sitting on the table and I didn't just look at them. I had plenty of yarn left, there was no yarn chicken happening. So when I counted these, I must have been wrong that it was six rows or something else occurred, but what, it has ended up with is that they're displeasingly now normally I wouldn't mind but it's the feeling they feel different on the hand because there's this much space after your thumb here and there's this much space after the thumb here and that's enough that it feels different now obviously like once they're on you don't really particularly notice but that just doesn't it feels like a lot of space it feels like I want to have more, a little bit more. So I'm quite disappointed with how these turned out. Now, of course I could rip back and just knit some more, but the, in all honesty, the likelihood of me doing that is fairly low, sadly. It's really low. I'm quite sad about it because they, these are just perfect and these are just not. And if they were both like this, it would be fine. But the fact that you've got one that's like, yes, this is just right. <laughs> it's just it's not as ideal. Um, but anyways, they're finished. Hooray, hurrah. They're really warm. I've worn them a couple times. Really, really warm and snuggly. Um, my other finished object is my test knit, the Sky Beanie. This was knit in Knitting for Olive Compatible Cashmere and um, it is entirely in Twisted Rib and I will show you the, so here it is and this is the crown, can't really see what I'm showing you but here's the crown, look at that, lovely decreases and this is by Um, Josephine and Carlotta, they're sisters that designed this and the pattern has like three different varieties 
Um, some entirely ribbed, some entirely twisted rib, some entirely um, <clears throat> stockinette. Um, I love it. It's great. I did the size large because I have a really big head and um, it fits me really nicely. I'd say it's a little bit on the loose side, um, so I might might see, I, it has been blocked and it's all in twisted rib. It feels lovely and because it's cashmere, it actually is really warm even though it's quite thin. And I think the twisted rib gives it structure even though it's a really floppy, it's very floppy and like um, has a lot of uh, drape, the fabric, because it's fairly loose. Um, I have a fairly loose gauge um, but I'm quite often, I'm quite often very want to go down needle sizes because I, I don't always like the fabric that's made. And to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of lazy. But anyways, um, I think I did, I think I did get gauge on this. Um, and it turned out really well. I love it. I do like the marling. I was hoping for more when I originally started out with these color choices, but it's very subtle, which I quite like. So it's a beautiful hat. I'm really happy with it and I wear it a lot. And it's a great hat because it doesn't constrict my head so much and I wear a hat a lot, like a beanie a lot at work because it can be cold. And like at the end of the day, because I usually wear quite tight fitting, like warm beanies, my hair can be like stiff. So like you take your beanie off and then you know, because my hair sits kind of all, all different ways, if I move, say my hair was like this and I took my, I can move, if my hair moves, it like hurts because it's been like, I don't know, beanied into place. It's been like glued into place by my beanie. So anyways, it's really nice to have a super floppy, relaxed, soft hat that can go on and warm me up, but um, not like constrict my head because it's constricted so often at work. <clears throat> Am I right? Your head is constricted at work. It's gotten to guzzling stage, this tea. So, um, updates on my whips now, because those are my FOs. Updates on the old whippy poos. I haven't done anything with the Gibson Ruffle. It's still in its state of basically finished, just needs a ruffle. Um, but I thought it would be fun to do the ruffle with my sister, and I was hoping that I was going to see my sister in January. I don't know if that's going to happen now. So I'm holding off. I think that'll have a little rest. I am thinking of having it as my Christmas jumper, though, so I might need to, might need to tickle that r ruffle on there at some point. Um, I'll show you my, my, um, the vest that I'm making my partner. Um, this is in the um, cone that I got in the charity shop of uh, Canadian wool from um, Custom Woolen Mills. It's four ply, single, single, um, sorry, it's four ply. Four ply is in, it's like fingering weight and it's a single ply. Um, oh, look, I have it on, I've finished a row so I can actually kind of show it to you. This, as I say, has been my in the car knit, and sometimes the test test knits have taken over. So last week, my be my sky beanie got taken over, the the car knitting because I needed the extra time, and this week, potentially my sock will take over just to finish it. But um, this is a heart that I placed, just I think a few days after I finished podcasting last time. So it is slow going, but I'm quite proud of how much I have now. I am meant to have 39 centimeters of this fisherman's rib. Um, it's looking really nice, and I think it's looking a good size for my partner as well, which is which is always good. Um, it's going to be oversized, and if it's not big enough for her, whoopsies, I'm going to have to take it. Never mind. Um, but just to show you how slightly discouraged I am at this stage. This is 15 centimeters. 
I need 39. I mean, look, we're almost at 15. So that's... Not halfway, not really close to halfway either. Never mind. <laughs> um, I reckon in another another week of car knitting, I'll have I'll have myself halfway up this. I'm just excited to get to the bits where I'm doing um, where I'm doing things because I. Because I sort of planned it out myself, so I'm following my own pattern, and I'm like, I want to start following it. Right now, it's really boring. I'm excited to follow my own pattern. That's what I'm excited for. It's not that it's too sloggy, because it's pretty simple, um, but it's just not very fast. And, of course, it's made even more so by the fact that I'm doing loads of different projects at the same time. So it would be much quicker if I was just knitting on it, you know, solidly. But, in the interim... I've also been where I've, I've finished finished the hat, which was my walk and knit. So then I got to focus myself on my pesky peskies as my walk and knit. And we're almost at the toe now. This will be my weekend knit. So when I do knit with my partner, it'll be on these probably. And... Um, because they're, you know, I've finished the gusset, I've gusseted out and I'm now just at, well, I'm actually, oh, I'm actually at the toe, I reckon. Anyway, the toe is, I can, I can kind of do toes without thinking too hard about them. Um, yes, I am at the toe, actually. I'm glad I did this podcast. I might have carried on knitting a bit more. And then had different length socks. Um, but yes, here they are. They're looking lovely. Pesky peskies. And this one is going to be finished, I reckon, by the end of the week. And then I will actually have a pair of socks for myself. I'm so excited. Um, and then I'll have a fair amount of this yarn left, which I'm also very excited about. Christmas socks! Um, my other, so this is my test knit that I've been really focused on to try and get it done. So I didn't realize, actually, let me get my sock blockers. Please hold color. Just because it's fun, let's do the pesky peskies just to show them off. This will be their second to last time on the podcast. They're going to miss coming on the podcast all the time, these pesky peskies by nature of actually being finished. So they'll come on one more time as the finished object and then that'll be it. Till I wear them and then they'll be what I'm wearing. So that's all right. You're never fully off this podcast. Knits. Um. <clears throat> so here's my pesky peskies. Looking gorge. Um. I've started playing around with my SSK because I always get this is the knit two together bit this is the SSK bit and it looks very now I haven't blocked these but it looks very like and this looks very smooth and I sort of tried playing around with it. This is the this is the knit two together side and this is the SSK side. Um Yeah, I don't know if there's a way to do it so that they look perfectly identical. The knit two together's and the SSK's, and they do, like because it looks like the knit two together is one straight line to me, and it looks like the SSK is one straight, one straight, which is what it is. You know, you're doing one decrease and then it's straight, and then one decrease and then straight. So it looks like the step ladder that it really is, whereas the 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 knit two together's just look like a straight line of decrease. 
So I'm not sure what the what I'm doing with my SSKs and, and if there's a way I could do my SSKs so they look less like that and more like the knit two together side. That's them in comparison. That's the knit two together side on my finished sock and on my unfinished is the SSK side. I don't know. Maybe it's the fact that I don't actually do an SSK, but I thought they were identical because I do the slip one, knit one, pass, slip stitched over. But I thought they were identical. But maybe, I think it's the direction that I'm slipping it when I slip one, if I'm slipping it purl wise or slipping it knit wise. And I'm not sure which one I normally do. I think it's slip it knit wise. And I think I tried slipping it purl wise, but I thought I tried it on this one and it still looks the same. So anyways, doesn't really matter, does it? Um, here we are, almost finished with the pair of socks, which I'm pleased about. Then I'll show you my test knit, which I showed you, I balled up the yarn, we balled up the yarn together yesterday, yesterday, last time, and I've almost finished one sock. It's been quite a push because these are twisted stitch, Bavarian traveling twisted stitch. They decided to do a name that was just as fiddly as the actual thing, which I respect. Bavarian Travelling Twisted Stitch. Oh, this looks to be a slightly larger than a small. Never mind. It fits my foot well, and I'm so close, as you can see, to being finished. But these are the her Herbarium Socks, Herbarium Socks, um, by Not A Day Without Knitting, who is named Masha, the woman. Um, fabulous. Look how beautiful they are. I was so excited. They are very autumnal, but I'm calling them Christmassy because I've made them red. I love everything about these socks. It's such a cool pattern. It's so well thought through. Everything about it is just like really perfect in the way it just, you know, it all just flows together. Like the line from the twisted ribbing down to here, then all along the gusset, and then along here, and then straight into the ribbing at the toe. I mean, it's just like beautiful. Down here, and then the rib down the back. Um, it's really, really, really gorgeous. So there they are. And yeah, the um, the toe is done in. I do, I do, as you could see there. I do like I think it's called traveling loop with my nine inch cirques, uh, my chow goos. It's it's mostly just because I'm lazy, and that's kind of the easiest way to do it is just to kind of continue using them and just basically I just pull it and then I knit for a while. And then I pull it through every time I don't can't knit anymore, if you see what I mean. Um, so it's kind of like it's kind of like um, magic loop, but you don't have the loop here so much. You just have it here, and you knit until the loop runs out. If that makes sense, it probably doesn't. Um, I can show you, but anyways, I I'll show you the the toe. So this is what the toe looks like. And what a cool idea to have ribbing on the top of the toe. I think that's a really cool idea. I think it'll help with the fit as well as it looks, it looks quite neat. Um, I'm worrying that this is like slightly uneven. Um, let me try it on for you, as we know I like to try things on. Um, excuse my pink wool leggings that will clash beautifully with these red socks. I mean, how cool is that ribbing on the toe? I think that's really cool. I'm into it. 
um, just gorgeous, really, really gorgeous socks. Um, yeah, I love them. I'm really, really looking forward to wearing them. Um, but it'll be a while because I'm fundamentally opposed. <laughs> I have my one, um, I, I'm fundamentally, okay, I've done my test knit in the summertime for the beautiful, beautiful Rose Bloom knits and her gorgeous socks, <laughs> Swan Lake socks. And I still haven't finished the second one and I'm fundamentally opposed to finishing a second sock on a test knit before I've finished a second sock on a prior test knit. So that sock is gonna have to hang out by itself for a while. And also I'm a bit tired of Twisted Rib because I've done this whole thing in Twisted Rib and then I've done that in Twisted Rib and they're both, they were both test knits. And so therefore they were both like, I have to do this. So it's like Twisted Rib kind of got a little bit of a connotation of like, must go faster. And so I need a little Twisted Rib break anyway. So I'll need a break from that sock once it's finished. So it's, I, I don't, want to say that it's going to be a Christmas sock, but that's okay because I have my peskies as Christmas socks. Um, and anyway, you know, it can be in any time of the year sock. It's a... Anyway, I don't know what I'm saying. Point is, I think what I was saying was, you don't need Christmas socks, do you? You can just have nice socks that appear at any point in the year. Um, I was going to take this off the tiny needle that it's on to show you, but I haven't. So this is, I, t I said I was gonna cast on a ranunculus for my friend. I'm not sure if I'm gonna see her now, but here it is. Look at that. So I've finished the pattern on the yoke and I'm now just doing the increases for the sleeves before I rem like take off the sleeve stitches. Um, so it's, it's looking lovely. I was trying it on to like check that it fits around my head. So I was like, fabulous. Yes, it does fit around my head happily. So that's fine. It'll fit. Um, yeah, I mean, lots of people have, have chatted about this pattern, so you probably heard about it. It's really fun. I'm doing it in one strand of Arveta, which is a sock yarn by Phil Kulana. And <clears throat> this is my first first ball. I got four. Um, I think you, you probably are meant to be able to do this in just two balls of Arveta, um, because it's meant to be like 400, 500 meter project. But I got four because, you know, I like to buy double the amount of yarn for no reason. Um, never mind. It's fine. I'm hoping to be able to use some of this in consort with some of this for some Christmas socks for my partner. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to do that now because those socks aren't finished before Christmas. I can't use the leftovers until I've finished those socks. So who knows what's going to happen. But it's very close to being finished with the first ball. And I'm very close to um, taking off for the sleeves. So that's nice. Um, yeah, it feels really soft and fluffy. It's done on six mil needles, so it's a very loose gauge. Um, but it's got these lovely, you know, yarn overs. The last time I did this pattern, I messed up the yarn overs so they didn't make a diamond. They made just like a very abstract pattern didn't even notice until I saw other people's and I thought, oh, never mind. <laughs> um, but I've got the diamonds this time, folks. I've gone and I've only gone and followed the pattern properly. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so lovely, really nice. That is probably potentially something else I might be knitting on at the weekend because it is at the stage where there's only vague amounts of attention required because you're just adding for the sleeves and that's it um increasing adding and <clears throat> that's almost all my whips i have one new cast on to show you 
it's an intense one and I have cast it on and knit one row this is my welcome to the jungle sweater to be um, a very intimidating project so but I'm very excited about it um, now that I've worked out how the pattern works if you if you get this pattern I found the chart very confusing the chart for the color work because it's a three-in-one chart so you start out and you knit the um, you knit the back the sleeve the tops of the sleeves and one stitch of the front it's a top down and you go back and forth and you increase the stitch at the front and the sleeves obviously as well um, until and then you cast on and then you've you joined in the round basically uh, which is kind of a cool way of doing it you just sort of like you're creating this front sort of lower instead of doing short rows you're just literally going back and forth until you join in the round um, and then you join in the round and you do a yoke and I'll show a picture of what the jumper looks like it's leopard print and it's done in double knit color work um, so obviously you need the color work to do the leopard print the color work chart is for the whole jumper is this shape and I couldn't for the life of me understand where I was meant to go it's a three-in-one color work chart so it's just one big splotch of color work and one big splotch of color work and basically there's lines to show you this is the back this is this is this this is the sleeve this is the front and so the lines basically when you're like right i'm knitting the front now you look at only that portion of the color work when you're like oh i'm knitting the back now you you look at that portion of the color work and it was not clear to me <laughs> so i was just like oh no i've got no idea what's happening here i've got no idea how to read this i don't know how to do the first the first you know i followed all the written instructions but once it said like do the color work in the chart i was like Where's row one? I don't know what to do. It was very, very scary. But um, Katya at Popnit um, helped me understand it. So that was lovely. Um, I'm very excited to, to give it a try, but I just haven't had time to sort of sit down and do it. It's double knit. So you're knitting, the f you're knitting two pieces of fabric simultaneously and the two pieces of fabric will be opposite colours. So, instead of having floats in a way, your, your floats and things are all inside the two pieces of fabric. It'll be double thick and it will be um, opposite colours. So the leopard print on one side is going to be pink spots on a navy blue background and on the other side it's going to be navy blue spots on a pink background. Um, and so it's leopard print, then it swirls, and then it's zebra print. And I had to choose colours, which was very stressful at the weekend. So this is going straight into my acquisition, which is the things for this. <clears throat> this is going to be for my partner, so it's, it's big. It looks really huge, but that's because, like I said, this is two pieces of fabric. So um, it's eventually just going to be look more thick and not as long. But it, it looks looks long because you're holding the two pieces of fabric side to side if that makes sense this is twice as wide as it's actually going to be in real life that's what i'm saying um so it's this <clears throat> sort of here i'll show you my acquisition and also learning how to do double knitting with purling and color work i'm using this and it's quite helpful um, but it's, it's a thing. It's like, woo, woo, this is intense. But that was the point of this jumper, was it was very intense. And I'm quite excited. These are my acquisitions for this jumper. <laughs> it's so much yarn. I'm making a size medium, potentially large. I'm not entirely sure yet. I don't know if it's reasonable to have 
decided to start on the medium and maybe go to the large, but I'm a loose knitter and so usually my whatever size I make, it ends up a little bigger than that size. So <clears throat> I think it's better to go with medium because my partner's probably in between the two sizes of medium and large. Um, so the top is leopard print and that's going to be this pink and navy. It's falling down. I have so much yarn. Um, <laughs> I've never bought this much yarn for a project before. So this is the top, pink and navy, leopard print. Then the middle bit, the swirls, I think they look best when they're very low contrast because I think otherwise it takes away from the like animaliness because the swirls aren't an animal print. So I chose these two colors for the swirls because they're very low contrast. Um, and I think that'll look nice because it just, it makes it like the color work looks like, okay, something's happening there, but I'm not entirely sure. And there's so much animal print happening right now. It's probably animal print. So I think that's what I'm aiming for with this bit. And then the bottom is zebra print. And that is gonna be these two colors. And then it obviously follows on the sleeves the same way. So the sleeves will be the swirls here and the zebra print here. Um, and then there's a, um, double color ribbing, two color ribbing on the sleeves and the, and the, and the bottom and the, you know, where the ribbing is on jumpers. And that, I'm not entirely certain what I'm going to do. I had originally planned to do this gray and pink because my partner wanted the ribbing and cuffs and everything to be in pink, but I'm not entirely sure that pink with gray is going to look great because it'll be very stripey and I don't know if you want that much stripiness happening in consort with all of this but we'll see this is the end so I can always do something else someone suggested doing these the two low contrast colors for the ribbing um which could maybe work or maybe like one of the colors from that plus a gray which is a little bit like more subdued um or if she really wants pink i think pink would look fine i think it just needs something that is not as contrasty as the second color for the pink um so that it doesn't look so stripy and and it just looks more like slightly more blendy so i could always just get a different ball of arveta because it's arveta I did get this colour because I was, the woman at the shop was so unhelpful. I was like, I have to choose eight colours for this jumper. It's so stressful. Can you help me? And she's just like, and I was like, great. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, bless her. Um, so I, I got stressed and also she was like, 13 minutes, we finish, we close. And I was like, ah. And um, so I was, I couldn't decide. So I got this color, but then I also got this color. But I think I got this color as well, just because my partner liked it for socks. So I, I don't, I don't know. Any of these would be nice with the pink. I don't know that they would be good as stripes around a neck. But girl, we got so much to get through before we get to that stage. Like, it's fine, it's fine. I got a lot of other things to do before I start worrying about that. So this is all of the yarn I got for this one jumper. Well, it's two jumpers in one. I look really hench right now. That's funny. So all the progress I got on my starting on my selfish slip over was unraveling the skein to start winding it. So that selfish slipover isn't happening for a while at least. Um, I feel like I'm at the stage where I'm a bit settled in my whips now and I'm gonna probably just work, work through some of them before I cast anything else on. I don't have the cast on fever anymore. Um, so that's quite comforting. <laughs>
<laughs> some of these whips is going to start getting some some love. And I mean, I have just cast on like the most whippiest whip of them all. Folks, I'm 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 open to taking bets for how long this is going to take me. 2 years? A year and a half? 8 months? I mean, that would be impressive, I think. 10 months? I'm open to bets here. Anyways, um, that's all my acquisitions. I had been on a yarn ban and then I just, I just wanted to make this jumper. So I got the yarn for it. And do I feel bad about it? I mean, it is for someone else. I feel a little bad about it. There's always a reason to buy yarn. And if you've decided not to, then don't. Everyone's shouting at the computer right now, aren't they? They're like, no, it's fine. <laughs> it, it is fine. But also I think if I, if, if something that's, if, okay, here's what I'm saying. If it's going to give me pleasure and make me happy to knit through my stash, the only way to give myself that pleasure and happiness is to not allow any excuses for buying yarn. Because yes, I want to make this jumper, but I, you know, probably want to make a hundred different jumpers that require different yarn. And I have yarn currently, and I there's lots of jumpers I want to make or things I want to make that I could use that yarn for. So why don't I choose those jumpers instead of the other ones? <laughs> And there's perfectly valid reasons for why I would choose those other ones. But it's just priorities, right? What's going to bring me the most happiness? Knitting through my stash or doing that other thing? And I think as long as I know what my priorities are, I can stay, stay on the right track and either buy or not buy yarn. Um, I might try and do one row of this actually now. Because... I'm quite excited to give it a go. It just, it, it looks so incredibly, incredibly fiddly. I am actually, I think I'll do one row for you on camera. And then, then I will clean up because I do have to go to work and this flat needs to be clean before my partner comes and it would be nice if I bought some, got some milk in. Milk, milk, milk. Nice if I got some milk so she could have some coffee in the morning. Anyways, one row. You can do it. It's okay. This one row together, you're helping me. Okay. So, this is what I've been doing, using this and knitting kind of the way I normally knit. <clears throat> oh, I need another needle. <laughs> this is starting out well. Right. Um. God, I don't even know what, which one of these is colour A and which is colour B. Nightmare. Um, okay. Okay. So, yeah, basically, you're knitting and purling with two colours and you change that. I mean, I feel like such a robot with this thing on my hand. <laughs> Wait, what's happened? Oh, I've put these on the wrong. If you put them in the wrong way round, they do not hide themselves. You have to have them the right way round on this thing. Otherwise the, the threads Honestly, as long as I 
I'm not obstructed by perfection and I come at this with a sense of fearless adventure. I will stay, I will only improve. Here we go. So, right. Yeah, this is the way to do it. With the one in the back at the back and the one in the front at the front. Oh God, at this, I've, I think I'm supposed to already be increasing. Jesus, help me. I think I was already supposed to increase. Well, this has started out well, hasn't it? That's the problem, it's so hard to like put down because you've got this whole setup happening. <gasps> Where's my phone? Increase left. Okay. I have to actually increase as well as do this. So Roxanne Richardson says that she likes to knit bottom up. And she likes to do it seamed. So flat and not in the round. And that is not a, a widely popular way of knitting jumpers. Um, there's a lot of, lot of people that do top down and in the round. One of the reasons Roxanne Richardson gives for why she likes bottom up Increase right with a pearl. Welcome to the jungle. Oh, I think I've done it in the wrong order now. Goodness, this is a strong start. Right. It's hard getting the tension as well. Right. So I need. Right. One, two, three. Oh, for goodness sake. Just, just, just give me one, one quick moment here. This is wrong. I've done the wrong colour now. Already, folks. Already done the wrong colour. What a beautiful, beautiful start we've had to this wonderful, wonderful time. Right. I'm gonna say. This is legitimately so confusing, I can not tell you how confusing this is. It is out of control, confusing. I've got three. I need, I need another four. This is completely mad. I'm gonna have to work something else out here because this, seriously, one, it's not, it's not quick folks. It is not quick because it looks the same. Okay, it's gotta start to, get, it's gotta start to get more reasonable like later on, honestly. It's, it has to because this is so confusing. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
So my method is only working for one of the color situations. I can't explain it to you. It's it's so confusing. Um, <laughs> oh my God, I've done it wrong. Hey, this is so, 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 so confusing. I've done the wrong bit of the chart. No, I have to go back. Okay, what I was saying originally about Roxanne Richardson was she says that she likes to do them bottom up because then you can get used to the pattern, all of this situation, and you don't have to also be shaping for the sleeves or the yoke or anything. You're just knitting in the round or knitting straight, whatever it is, but you're just knitting the pattern until the pattern gets like comfortable. Someone was saying this in the knit night as well, like they like bottom up because you just get used to it. And then by the time you're bored, then you start doing yoke stuff. And let me just say it's a valid point. Right, so I have done two stitches for the front and then I go to the sleeve and the sleeve is actually much later in the pattern. It's one, two, three, four, five. Look, because I've released so many stitches, now my tension's off. Right, okay. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, baby. Come on, tension, get back to me. Get back to me, please. Right. Okay, here we go. We're rolling. I normally twist it twice around my finger. This is only once. So let's just, let's just get it. Let's just get it, girl. Right, that's better. Come on, tension. Just give me give me a little bit of space here. Just give me some love. Just give me one, two, three, four. Just two. Just two this way. So gotta do two like this. Um it's it's hella confusing, but I think it's gonna get less confusing once I've got more fabric on the needles. That's what I think. I started this with the pearl. I should probably not. No. Back it up, back it up, back it up. Right, now we can go one, what is happening, what is happening, one, yes, that's, oh, I've completely lost my mind. Oh my God, this is so hard. I can do this. I can do this. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep those stitches rolling, raw hide. My tension isn't good enough for me. My tension isn't good enough for me. That's what I'm praying for. I've started it with the pearl. I should have started it with the knit. Gosh darn it. I've got absolutely no idea what's happening. Tension, you and I are gonna be best friends. Best friends forever, cause I need you. I need you so bad.
that was my tension song. Tension, oh, oh, tension tree, oh, tension tree, I need you to help me out. So the way I'm doing it, like, so like English style with this thing to just keep them separated. So it's as if I just had one and I was doing like knit pearl ribbing with one with one thread. It's basically what this is like, but it only works on if if I have the pink in front and the blue in back. And obviously because because it's color work and I'm doing leopard spots, the pink is only in front some of the time for some of the pattern and then the other time it's the blue. So when I do that, it starts to get a hair confusing because I've got to get, it, it's because the floats have to hide themselves, they have to always be behind some of the work. See how it sounds really confusing? That's how it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not 100% certain we're going to get through one, one row today. But that really worries me. <laughs> because, God, I don't know if I can get, I don't know if I can get back into this if I'm not at the end of the row. So I've got three. Okay, I've got, th what do I have? Where am I? What's happening? What is life? <sighs> Just done two. Just done. Three, two, so I'm doing three. This is such an adventure. Now I've got to do one, two, seven. Got to do seven the wrong way round. I don't like that. I don't like doing them the wrong way round. I wonder if this would be easier. Continental. I might have to try Continental, but I don't know if my brain can deal with me switching to Continental now. I don't think it can. So I'm going to go ahead and hold off, but this is a theory I'm willing to to try out because otherwise this whole lifting the hand up feels like something I'm not gonna be able to stick to. So I knit English but I knit without lifting my hand off the needle so I just kind of like wee with my finger instead of like lifting my hand off the needle which is another way to knit English style. Um, and with this double knitting, it's turning out that it looks like I need to lift my hand off the needle to get this one round in the right order so that it's hiding its float. And I don't know if I'm into that. Or five. Six. Seven. Oh, fun, I've got one too many stitches. Oh, isn't that always a thrill? Well, I meant to, um, increase. So I suppose I don't need to increase here. <laughs> Girl already has that increase taken care of. Yeah, that's fine. Raglan increase, done. And then I've got a... Uh, not sure where this raglan stitch is meant to exist in the colour chart. Doesn't seem to be charted anywhere. So the one raglan stitch um, potentially is always the same. One guesses. One doesn't know, but one guesses. Right, so now I read the chart the way I was reading it before. 
to Oh no, I was meant to do an increase. Right. Two. Three. Oh, I've lost my lost my tension because I had to go back. Hate it when I do that. I have to go back and then I lost my tension. One, two, three. Sit on my knee. Right. Six. Six the wrong way round. We don't like doing it the wrong way round. One, two. Three. Wrong way round. One, two, three, four, five. I can only imagine the level of stress someone who was test knitting this would have. Good grief. Six. That's that. Fantastic. Then we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six normal ones. We like the normal ones. That is slightly easy. On a scale of really hard to pretty hard, they're all the way down at pretty hard. Feel like such a robot. <laughs> um, one, two, three, four, five. So for every stitch, you do two stitches, six. Because I'm making two sided fabric. One, two, three, four, five, six. Where on earth was I? I've got no idea. Two. Got two more. Two and three and two and three. Right. So, two. <laughs> three normals. Yay! Oh, wait, no. Where am I? What's happening? Yes. Yes, that's it. I'm correct. I'm accurate. One, two, oh, tension, come, come back to me. Three, this is really hard if you don't have like reasonable tension. Because you can't grab the right strand. Okay. What did I say? Two and three and two and three? Yes, yeah, so I've done two and three. Now I've got to do two and three. Two. I hate this so much. Come on, tension. Let's 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 get back on track, please. Two and three and two and three, and then what do we do? Then we do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven wrong ones. I don't like the wrong ones. All of a sudden, just started doing it right. Don't do it right, do it wrong. My watch is telling me to stand up. I'm doing one row of knitting, leave me alone, watch. What has happened here? Well, that's wrong. I mean, it's right, which is wrong. <sighs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Let's get moving. Fabulous. I'm only going to have more stitches on these rows as time goes by. Can't wait. Can't wait. This will be a labour of pure and unfiltered love. Because if it's not, this is not happening if I'm not just doing it out of pure joy and love. And right, how many have I got now? Six normal ones. We like you, six normal ones. Right, get back in your thing, Mr. Thingy. Won't be having you leaving your space. That's not what we're here for. Right, one. One little baddie. Oh, that was the make one. Oh, never mind. I seem to have cast on the wrong number of stitches. I'm not even worrying about that. I feel like sometimes when you have so many stitches to cast on, you kind of give up counting and then you're just like, I'll sort it out when I get to it. <laughs> am I the only one that does that? Maybe I am. Oh, I'm such a nightmare. Right. We're getting onto a sleeve now, so I've got to start reading from that bit of the pattern. One, two, three, four, five. But I've also got to to create a stitch. So let me do that. God, am I making a twisted stitch? Do I care if I'm making a twisted stitch? More than likely the answer is no. Honestly, I'm just happy if I'm doing a stitch at this stage. I don't mind if it's twisted or not. Right. Here we go. So we're on and we're off. Ooh. Four. I might have found a little method here. Five. I mean, it's not the most elegant way, but I don't have to pick up my hand, my hand, which makes me happy. Folks, I think we've found a way forward here. Right, I've done my seven. Now I'll get to do one, two, three, four. Four normal ones! Wee! One! Oh, come on, tension. Don't desert me now. We're near the end. I mean, I don't know if ignoring those increases is going to really just bite me later, but it seems like I have the right amount of stitches now. Because now I just need two stitches for the end. And that's a normal one. And a wrong one. And the wrong one. Show off my fancy method. Ladies and gentlemen, humans and aliens, Robots and people, elves and orcs. I have just finished row two of the Welcome to the Jungle sweater. And it is very exciting. It's gonna be so so good. It's gonna be so good. Doesn't look like much now. 
but by next week it's gonna look almost the same maybe one more row I'd initially thought that I would really like to have one row done a day after this experience I feel like I'll be really pleased with one row a week. Maybe two rows a week. Or we'll stick with one row a week. I think one row a week is my new goal. So that is row one completed. For row two. I mean, row one was just straight double knitting. Pfft, easy. Row two, colour work. I'm going to mark it down. This was this is how serious it was. I went and got this printed. I never print patterns, but this one I was like, hmm. I think we need to have this physically existing. Um, anyways, thank you so much for watching. I will edit this all down. It's only 126 actually, not horrendous. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you're having a lovely time and I hope that you are getting into a festive spirit and getting cozy and cuddly or you're getting ready for some barbecues and getting a nice tan on um you know what i hope that whatever you're doing it's giving you some joy at some point and um that it's helping you to deal with the non-joyous things as well why do i give such complicated um goodbyes thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. See you later.